Fit like up the Donny boy here, and here we are with some rise of industry. Now, I think it was yesterday I put up my little preview of fit games I was going to be playing in 2018. This is one of them. Um, now, I'm actually going to start the game the day. We're just getting going through the tutorial. I've already been through all this, but it's quite a complex game, so I thought I'd explain some things that are happening as we're going through the tutorial. So we'll start that up. So I'll load in a map. I'm not sure if it's the same map every time. I've never actually paid that much attention to the map. You always seem to start in Chapwick. Yes, here is Chapwick. So it is actually a different layout. It's a different setup. But you always start in Chapwick. So here we are. Welcome to Rise of Industry, the game where you aren't where your entrepreneurial skills are put to the test. Here are some instructions to give you a head start. So click on next, and this is just basic uh, W A S D to pan. You can actually move your arrow keys on your keyboard as well. Uh, right mouse button to pan. So if you hold down right right mouse button, uh, I'm going to hit invert this because this is weird. But uh, I'll change that later. If I actually meant to do it before, but uh, use Q and E to rotate, so just like in Transport Fever, Q and E, it sort of rotates you in 45 degree uh, increments, so we'll go back to our standard view or chat wick. Use the scroll wheel or the page up and down to zoom, so I like the scroll wheel, as you can see there's beautiful chat wick there, looking good. Right, you can hover, ah, this is just telling you that you can move these panels anywhere you so wish. Right, we'll zoom out a touch, and it's telling you, you now need to decide in your start and specialization. Now this is actually key, <laughs> if you screw this up at the start, uh, you'll be playing for hours, it's, it really is, it does actually matter for you pick here. I've heard other people playing it different, I've been sort of playing it my sort of way. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to play it. It has got a learning curve, so just be aware. Now this is telling me to se uh, select farming. So you go up in here, to the top right, select farming. Now, I've selected that as my specialization. There we go. Right, you now need to collect uh, this in the tutorial. It doesn't really give you an option in the tutorial, but when you come to do this, you will have to pick three, pick three things, three R&D points you want to use. So here it's, for your specialization farming, you can pick three things, but in everything else you can just pick one. So we're in gathering right now, so it's the water siphon, that's good. Sand collector is something I would pick later on and the lumber yard and the fisherman's pier now i've went with this a few times and then just selected this this and this because the fisherman's pier as long as you build in a city where there's water nearby and there are fish this simply just needs this can get fish and it can go straight to a shop in town or it can go to a food processing plant but it's one of those raw raw materials you can send to the shop straight away there's no production involved in it the water siphon you need for farming you can also sell water to some shops that'll accept it or you can sell it to state but we'll get into that in a minute so it is telling me to select the water siphon uh, i can build right next uh farming see the crop farm now when i first downloaded this game the orchard was actually up here and the plantation was down there and the orchard was good because with the water you could create apples and oranges and oranges mixed with wood and uh, paper mill that you could make cartons at paper mill you could make orange juice at a food processing plant which is an industry but here it's telling us to go unlock the crop farm okay i'll place this down here so this is showing you it's this a choice at the start during the tutorial so we're going to unlock everything it's asking so we've unlocked the crop farm the water siphon the truck depot 
is the next. Uh, how will you there? All right. Now, if you go into industries here, it's not going to let me go into industries because we're in the tutorial. It wants me to close it. Right. Close the tech tree. Now, before you go into any build anything, you need to select a city on the map and buy a permit. So always go around and see which cities are sort of in the best locations. Sometimes you can get a permit in a city and then just across the border, just a wee bit down the road, there'll be another city that you can also deliver to, bear that in mind. Or cities that are close to the edge of the map, it's easier to sell stuff to state because the trucks don't have that far. Selling to state is basically having a truck drive off the edge of the map. And it's like it's selling it to a map on the other side that you can't actually see. So buy a permit from the, settle, the settlement's town centre. So you click on region. Now, depending on the size of the city, well, depending on how much you will have to spend. If it's a large city, it might cost you a million. If it's just a small city, it'll cost you something like this, 445. And there are cities that have just town halls. And you can build entire cities. But I think that's coming later on in the game. Now, it's surface area, this guy's Chapwick's region. Is 8,906 8, tiles. We're not going to need that for the tutorial. Are you sure you want to build, uh, to purchase this full build permit for this region? Yes. Now get rid of that. We're on to the next one. All right. It says be careful where you place buildings. If you, if a building is placed too close to a settlement, you will lose influence with them. That means if I was to build a farm right here. Uh, the influence would go down. You've sort of get your industries out into the sticks, we'll say. Especially things that are polluting industries, if you cause too much pollution, it's going to be bad. So, if you hear a factory or a building with a chimney stack and there's plumes of smoke coming out of it, try and get it away from the city and try not to bunch industries like that all up in one area, you'll get a hell of a kicking the nuts for polluting our area but on to the next right chosen the settlement so it's saying again you lose influence if you build too close influence is your reputation for settlement if your influence drops to or less than zero you won't be able to build in that region so if it hits zero you can't place any more farms factories or anything in that region until you sort of cleaned up the mess that you've already made you need to get it to zero or above or actually you need to get it above zero. Right, place the water siphon. Down here is the build menu for all your stuff. You've got demolish, uh, duplicate, terraforming, which is not actually available yet, uh, and landscaping coming soon, terraforming coming soon. Uh, bridges can be unlocked, and tunnels can be unlocked using the uh, logistics tech tree. But we're going to go into buildings. Here we've got the water siphon place that. Now that's in gathering. I'm not sure what this thing is. That's farming. That's uh, industry and this is logistics. So we click on this. It gives you a place to place it. You can push R to rotate it. It's going in there. Now what is like this? This will process water. But you need to gather water. So you need one of these uh, gathering majiggers. That's what I'll call them. <laughs> right. Place your roads. Roads are down here on the bottom left. Right. Now roads are strange. You click and drag. Voila. Click and drag. Voila. Now it's saying here that roads aren't connected. See this road here and this road. These aren't actually connected. Trucks will just drive up and down here. You need to actually fold the road across. It'll show you that in a second. Right. Go into there. Now, fix the road placement. Looks like the roads aren't connected properly. That's obvious. So you need to click along here to connect that and that. Now you need to make sure that's done or the trucks will not be able to find their destination. Now you see two trucks heading from the gatherers. 
head into the water siphons. They've we've got water from these uh, sort of water plant things here, and they're taking it to the water siphon. Right, we've fixed the road placement. You need to click on a menu to close it after you're done with it. Place a crop farm, so we need to go back in here. Now we need to go into farming and build the crop farm. Now it's asking me to rotate it. There we go. Then you need to place fields. There. Right, we'll close that for the moment. Now before we go on to the next, I'll just point something at It's like this stuff is all out away from the city. If you actually do decide to build like here or there, try not to leave your industries and factories coming straight off our main road. Uh, right now in the game, trucks sort of phase through each other, but later on there will be actual traffic jams, your trucks will get boxed up. And if you've got a lot of trucks waiting to turn into one farm, they'll just sort of build up on the road, as they would be in Transport Fever, if you had trucks, 50 trucks waiting to get into one truck stop, they just cause congestion on the road. And I think that's implemented in the game, I think that's something that's coming. When you watch the trailer, you see a bit that says if you cause too much congestion, it basically grinds your transportation logistics to a halt, which then grinds your industries to a halt. So bear in mind that I always try to build away from the city, even though it means trucks have got further afield to sort of deliver stuff. Now place a road from the water siphon to the crop farm. You need to select roads again. Need to come from here, come from there. Excellent. Now click the roads off again. Now we're going into uh, the logistics part of things. So select the water siphon. Now destination, choose destination. Right. We've got one farm that requires waters. Uh, waters requires water. <laughs> right. Crop farm Chopwick one vegetables. I think it's automatically creating vegetables but you can change it. I'll show you in just a second. So it's going from the water siphon to there. So we can close that. Our farm is now growing vegetables. Time to sell them to the nearest buyer. The state will buy anything but at half price. So that's what I'm saying about state. If you've got excess or something, sell it to state. Yeah, it's only, you only get it for half the price, but at least you're continuously making money. Then, just rather than stockpiling a heap of crap that you can never sell. And I'll come to more on that later. Right, so I need to build roads again. Uh, the difference between the urban road and the thingy road is obviously the speed. And uh, we'll spin it around so we can see where we're going. We're heading up there. And up to here, uh, from there please, to there. Now this is telling me far it wants to build the road. This is not necessarily the fastest route. Obviously the fastest route would be to sort of come round here and into there. Then you're straight into Chapwick. Uh, open up the crop farm vegetable panel. So we need to go into here, we need to close this first. And into there, then choose a destination. You see here, one amount of water is needed. There are three being stored. Uh, zero units, it takes... Why is it not giving me production? Ah, because we're in the tutorial, it's not letting me select it. Uh, our fields are almost ready to harvest. They'll harvest three vegetables, because there's three water. So one needed, gives you three of them. Vegetable fields take 15 days. So 15 days it takes to grow vegetables once they have water. You see there, the water is gone. Three vegetables are now available. Uh, it's the same here. This takes seven and a half days to produce water. So just bear that in mind the time it takes to build things. And I'll come to me on that later on once we get to the shops. Or it gets more complicated. Right, destination. 
No trucks have been assigned. We want to sell it to state. Now always try and sell it to the one with the closest amount of tiles. There is a second in here that we can't actually see how much tiles the distance is, but 103 is near that far. So now that's done, your three vegetable trucks are heading out to sell it to state. Now we're in truck depots. So select the truck depot from the construction panel. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll spin it around. Sorry, I should have moved that tutorial panel. We'll move this to over here now. Place a truck depot near the farm and it jumps straight there for me. Right. Go away. Right, select the nearest truck depot as the vegetable farms. So we've got our three trucks going to state. Damn you, tutorial panel. <laughs> We're now going to change the destination, so we're going to hit plus three trucks assigned and it's now going to go to uh, logistics. It's going to go to the first truck depot. So now you'll have three vegetable trucks coming out of here and going into there. So close that, set the closest farmer mar farmer's market as the second destination. Ah, okay, no. Is that the closest farmer's market is the second destination? Ah, okay, right, so, I've set the trucks to drop stuff off here. Now, the benefit of these trucks is they hold more. So you can maybe put them in multiple stops. Right, choose destination. Uh, raw resources. We want vegetables. So, click on there again, and then commercial. Then we went farmer's market one, it's only 18 tiles away. That's this farmer's market down here on the right. So that's all done. So now trucks will deliver from there up to here. And then a set of trucks will leave here and go into there. Know that trade routes, unlike normal destinations, can only be done between buildings of the same type. So they can only go between truck depots and train depots, etc, etc. But their vehicles can carry a lot more and are cheaper. So you can transport more goods for less price than it is to transport something direct from here and then go straight to the farmer's market. So you'll see three trucks sort of leaving here in a second. Ooh, it doesn't let me. You can survive perfectly fine without a single trade route, but to be a real industrialist you might want to learn how to use them. Bear with me for a moment. Okay, right, it's going to show us how we use this now. But if I've just explained basically is how we use it, open the trade routes panel. So, we need to add a route. Uh, we need to click on trucks, because it's trucks we're currently running. From truck depot 1, we then need to select vegetables. And then we can select up to two vegetables. Uh, two or four slots in use. If you had four sets of vegetables waiting there, you could deliver four. That would be perfectly fine. Now, the truck depot in Chopwick. Right, we need to add a stop. It's kind of like transport fever. We need to click on trucks again, and then go to truck depot two. And then you see here it's in red because it's going to unload everything once it reaches the other side, which is fine. Uh, right, now push play, you push the play button here, if we move this, there we'll have three trucks heading towards the depot at the other side. Trucks are now moving, you are now able to add more stops, and then you can sort of, hey, you could hate picking up one thing, dropping off one thing, picking up another thing, or maybe stopping some other places. It's entirely up to you. So. Get rid of that. Next. You can also add more vehicles to move even more products on the route here. Soon enough you will be able to control boats, trains and zeppelins. So I'm not sure if they're on the go yet. They might be coming in later on. It seems from the D updates to the game, you're, if you're running a current save game, you will have to restart. <laughs> right, here we are. The farmer's market. So we have the farmers market settlements set their demand for a product based on their population and how quickly that product is produced. 
So, we are delivering vegetables. Well, we're not uh, delivering vegetables yet, we soon will be. Uh, two per week, zero is stored, you'll get 2,400. So two, dem two units demanded per week, zero units stored, 100 units available capacity. So it only needs two per week, but you can fill up with at least 100 vegetables. Uh, product based on their population how quickly that so uh, the bigger the population the more this stuff will increase shops will consume products consume products equal to their demand every week any extra supply is stored to be consumed later so as I was saying it can store up to 100 uh, once it reaches 100 you can't deliver any more food uh, stored by the AI I'll get into that at the end uh, next unfortunately you only get paid for what is consumed at that price for that week and as you see keeping a shop supply low will keep profits high now it said two per week so a few you need to do is this is delivering three vegetables up here so if we click on truck type of two it's negative let me open it but there are now three in here. You only want to deliver two to Chartbooks Farmers Market because that's all at once. You see these trucks are getting delivered. One, two, and three. And now we've got three stored, but you only get paid for the max price for two per week. Uh, the weeks go pretty fast, so you should be good. But any excess you've got, Try and sell at the state. Don't flood the shop with too much. Uh, it doesn't like that. Price will come down. Also, when you play in career mode, there will be AI. As you see here, it says A0 zero, zero stored by the AI. What happens is the AI builds super duper close to the city. It builds like five different farms and lots of other stuff and it floods the market. Which is a real pain in the ass. I'm not sure if that's how it's going to be when the game is fully implemented. It seems a bit daft. It doesn't seem right because they instantly come in and flood the market with apples, vegetables, fish, all the stuff that you would basically start with, which brings the price of your stuff down to basically garbage. You'd be as well selling everything state at that point because the price of this just becomes so low. So there's three being stored, two are being used per week. So try to work it out so that you've just got two in there. It's at least once a week. So that is that. And just be aware of the AI. They will overrun and flood the market with heaps of stuff you are trying to sell. And it will royally screw you over. So we can then go into the global market, which is up here. This gives you a list of everything. Components, end products, luxury. This is all your raw materials here and fit sort of price they're getting. So you can go through everything. Six units demand per week. So this is like a combination of every single city that is on. If we go to vegetables, there are six units demand per week, four units store, two units sold per week. Right, that's fine. I don't think there is actually any other cities on this tutorial map. I think it's maybe just this scene. Maybe one other. Open up the Chapbooks Farmers Market and then open up the hardware store. Right, let's bring them each side. So here we've got uh, foodstuffs, uh, some raw materials, fish, apples. They're pretty easy to make. Uh, you can also sell things, wheat. So this is our stuff you can sell meat, uh, grapes. I think it says berries. It kind of looks like hops. And here you can sort of more refined goods, ceramics, uh, coal, copper tubing, all that stuff. This uh, takes a while to sort of make though. You need to go through all the proper gatherers and stuff. So we'll close them and I think we're just coming to the end of the tutorial. So just a quick note here. At the beginning of the game, every shop will raise or lower a few of their product prices based on the needs of the local market within the settlement. 
So this will not actually, these prices will not always be the same. Some will be lower, some will be higher. Just depending. So on to you next, and then it's telling me close them, close both the shop panels. Right, don't forget that the help panel has a plethora of information. So if you go to this, now this is a lot, it's got a lot of stuff. So regions, this gives you all the information. It's amazing how much information they've actually got. Settlements, this will give you a quick rundown on settlements and how they work. Uh, there's also little tabs here that you can also uh, click on. State trade, for example, that shows you how state trade works. Uh, if you click back off of that. Uh, right, uh, go to logistics. Warehouses, this tells you about warehouses, depots, trade routes. But there are there's tech tree specialization gathering. There is actually a recipe book. Yeah, here's the recipe book there. Which I can't click on. But that's it. Uh, I think this is the end of the tutorial. I think. So if you did actually watch this, I hope it was a, a detailed information this is just sort of things that i've figured out while i've been playing the game when i actually do start the actual series on this i will explain in more detail hopefully how things work but it's still an early access so they still have got some things to do so we've just to sort of work with what we've got but i like the game so far i love this style of graphics it's going to have some madness micromanagement involved in it at some point i dare say so that's been it for me, if you did actually watch this and you'd like to leave a like or comment then please feel free to do so, but that's been it for me, this has been Rise of Industry, I've been Danny Boy and I will catch you later.